Hey guys, John here with another video on saw chain. This is not a standalone, you know, how to type of video. The intent here is to be, we think of it as a homework assignment. If you were to be attending a game of logging hands on program with us, the level two day, we spend a pretty good amount of time. Uh, explaining how to sharpen chain, what chain to use. Um, I like to, you know, think about all the how-tos that are out there with sharpening chain. Really, the first question we got to ask ourselves is, what are we using the saw for? Are we standing on flat ground, mown grass? We got to make two cuts as fast as possible. It's a competition. You know, was that the application or? Are we um, standing in a river up to our waist in water, cutting up mud caked trees from a flood? Like, wow, <clears throat> right? Two extremes of saw use. Probably not either one being used here. What we're, most of us are talking about is cutting logs, cutting firewood, cleaning up blowdown, or you know, maybe clean up a trail or something. So it's somewhere in the middle ground. But all of those applications, there's different styles of chain that work better for certain situations. To get there, we've got to understand how this tooth works. There are five parts of a cutter tooth, and that's what I want to cover here in this video, <clears throat> okay? Um, let's get started. I'm going to go through it, and I'm going to really, again, this is not a how-to. This is just... How does it work okay so if you get a, a piece of paper and a crayon let's go number one is this guy here in the front its proper name a depth gauge it's common names depending on where you are regionally pretty common to call it a raker a drag a rider it's got a lot of nicknames this tooth determines the thickness of the chip common chain nowadays they're set right from the factory at 25 thousandths of an inch okay we modify them a little bit depending on what we're doing with the saw but that determines the thickness of your chip number two is the working corner on the tooth so where that top plate comes and the side plate come together we have a working corner I personally believe that that working corner is um, drastically underappreciated for what it does. Its job in life, to explain this, <clears throat> is if I take this here, it's just a broom, right? Just a whisk broom, and I have a piece of wood. The broom is really representing a piece of wood. The only difference, of course, is there's two major differences here. One, of course, is the wood is much more dense. But the other is showing the idea of the fiber. And if I get this broom tipped just right there, you can see that little fiber sticking up. The fiber of the broom. Okay? If you take a piece of wood, and i got a fresh cut piece of wood here. And you look really, really close, like right here. You can, it's, it's hair-like. That wood fiber is hair-like. It's super important to appreciate wood fiber. And, the, and go back to the broom, right? The stick of the wood, the piece of wood is the same as the, as the broom. It's fibers running this way, right? The difference is the wood fiber is hair-like. The reason that is so important is to understand what the point of the tooth does. The point of the tooth wants to and needs to hook into that fiber. Let me go back to the broom. Okay? The point will hook onto that fiber and the tooth will naturally be pulled down into the wood. Going back to the depth gauge, that stops the tooth from going too deep, thus 
setting the thickness of your chip. If we lose that point ever so slightly, it stops hooking the fiber. And you can kind of think of as the front of your tooth here is going to be like the front of a sled runner or the front of a ski to where it's just going to slide over the wood. We as the saw user, we feel like we we need to start pushing on the saw. What we're doing there is we're pushing the tooth down in to try to get it to hook onto that fiber. And we get the impression or the feeling from the saw that the chain is becoming dull. When in fact, it may not be the cutting edges getting dull. It can be simply we've lost that point and it peens down ever so slightly and, and it no longer hooks into that really hair-like fiber of wood. That's number two, right? Depth gauge, point. Now we have two cutting edges. We have a, what we call a side plate and the top plate. Those two jobs, I'm kind of going to explain them a little bit simultaneously here. <clears throat> in the sense that they have two very different jobs in life. They do two very different things. The side cutting edge. I like to say that the side cutting edge, okay, actually pays the bills or gets the job done. The reason that is, is if you think about a cutting edge, okay, I've got a cutting edge here, and you take a piece of wood, and you put your cutting edge to the piece of wood this way. I'm going to turn around here so you can see, okay, this way here. Any of us that have run a pocket knife before know that it is much harder to drive a cutting edge across the fiber. So I'm going to get here and where I can do it a little more easily, right? I'm trying to drive that cutting edge across the fiber, so I need to cut that fiber off. That's going to take a lot of power, right? But once I get that fiber cut off, you'll notice that the chip, you see where that will, will almost fall out of there. That's the difference between the side plate and the top plate. The side plate is trying to cut that fiber off. That's what's pulling the power from the saw. That there is why you hear from guys that will modify their saws and they'll put, you know, they want horsepower. It's the horsepower that's needed to cut that fiber off. Once that fiber is cut off, your top plate, which is 90 degrees to it, the chip pops out of there very easily. So that's the difference between the top cutting edge and the side cutting edge. Side cutting edge cuts that fiber off, top cutting edge is popping the chip out. There's four already, right? The depth gauge, the point, your side cutting edge, your top cutting edge. And the last part of the tooth, it's important to understand, is referred to as the chisel angle. Now if we can get that into the light here we go and what i'm talking about there is this this angle right here all the way across the underside of the top plate it's referred to as the chisel angle that chisel angle think of it as a little ramp that the chip slides down and then it escapes out under the back of the tooth Okay, so that really there in a nutshell is all five parts of the tooth. Is your depth gauge, your point, the side cutting edge, top cutting edge, and then that chisel angle. I want to leave you with a trivia question. And if you can answer this question correctly, then it really does indicate that you get it. You really understand what's going on. Okay, here's the question. During the process of cutting a tree up, you know, whether you're cutting firewood or cutting logs, doesn't matter. When you're cross cutting in a log piece of wood, 
I explained that the side plate cuts the fiber off, the top plate pops the chip out. Sometimes those two jobs will switch where the top plate cuts the fiber off and the side plate is kicking the chip out. Sometimes those jobs will switch part way through the cut. Now I'm not talking about ripping logs or anything like that. I'm talking about cross cutting your piece of wood. Okay. The fundamentals, as I first explained, is the side plate cuts the fiber off, top plate knocks the chip out. In reality, in the real world, those two jobs will switch back and forth all day long. Sometimes they'll switch part way through the cut. So the trivia question is, why would that happen? If you think you got the answer, put it in the comment. Be interested to uh, see what you think. Okay, so there's your homework assignment, okay, in a nutshell. And hope to see you at a game of logging program sometime in the woods. And we'll take this information and then we'll carry it into what style of chain to use and so on for your different cutting applications. All right, take care.